everyone. Welcome back to Q&A with RF Smart. My name is Sarah Archer and today I have Robert Franz Mathis joining me via Zoom. Robert is a technical product manager at RF Smart. He works with our NetSuite product. And today we're going to be answering a question that we get a lot. How should I set up my warehouse? And at RF Smart, we have a team of experts with years and years of industry experience who can help you as you begin planning and optimizing your facility for best results as you implement NetSuite and RF Smart. So Robert, thank you for being on our show today. Uh, Robert, when you're thinking about a new warehouse, what is the first thing that you need to consider? Sure. Um, I think uh, when, when considering a new warehouse facility, um, really the first things to start with are, are the more strategic things around the purpose of the facility itself. Um, you know, this could be something like opening a new distribution center to support a new region. Uh, it could just be based upon growth or expansion of the business needing to get into a new facility as the business scales. But starting at the high level, um, you know, having a well-defined uh, thought process around the purpose of the building, what are the things you're trying to solve, and also the timeline uh, of the facility as well. Is this something that you're going to uh, expect to be something that's going to support the business for the next five years? Maybe you're leasing a facility. Is this something that you're actually building maybe on your own business's property or something like that? So maybe it's a longer-term investment. Uh, so I think starting with that framework in mind um, is a first place to start. Uh, I think there are, there are a few other things that are good to start with, um, you know, doing some level of, of analysis on the existing business uh, on the warehouse operation itself, um, having a good baseline of what the business volume looks like today, and then thinking about that timeline, uh, looking forward uh, to that facility's lifespan that you expect to have, and thinking about what would the business look like uh, during that life cycle, so that as you step further into thinking about more specific things that are related to the design, um, you can define uh, goals in those business volumes and you can consider uh, the warehouse design you know, against uh, what the business is gonna look like at that time. Um, I think one more thing I, I would you know, kind of start with or is also is just asking the big questions uh, around you know, what are you trying to solve? Um, what is, you know, what are you, what are your main pain points you're trying to solve? So that as you start stepping into design options uh, for things that you could make choices on, layout, processes, equipment, things like that, um, you are focused on those as you step into that process. Um, and also, so that you're also becoming open-minded. Um, I think one common mistake that can often happen, particularly when business is scaling, I think this is more common than often, uh, it's more common, um, is taking the existing process or the existing concept that you have today um, in your business that may be based upon your current facility constraints or, or maybe how the business grew and then just scaling that into a bigger facility or into another facility, um, moving into a new warehouse is a unique opportunity to make the business better. And so it's good to uh, really kind of be ready to break some of the paradigms of some of the ways that you did things. It doesn't mean they all should change, you know, maybe you're doing some great things that you've learned of the business you should bring into the new facility, but um, you should certainly take the time to, to challenge and consider different ways of approaching uh, your warehouse processes so that you can uh, get the maximum value out of your effort. Robert, one of the things you mentioned was timeline and thinking about if your business is going to be changing or some changes that you might go through throughout the year. For many of our customers, their facility may look different depending on the time of year. Perhaps they're a e-commerce business and Christmas is really busy for them. They may have different needs at certain times of year. So what are some things that you might need to plan for? Sure. Um, you know, I think the, the thing that you hit on there when mentioning e-commerce, I mean, seasonality, you know, is, is a primary driver for a lot of businesses. And so um, that is also, of course, something to, you know, consider as you look at the layout and the process of the facility. Uh, we've, you know, so for some businesses that seasonality might just be, you know, a 20 or 30 percent spike, but for other businesses, it could be a 600, 800,000 percent spike. And so, you know, those peak period days, uh, might look very different. So um, as you kind of go through the process of laying out the facility, I think it's important to really envision, you know, how the design is going to support the business in those various states of operation. So, you know, if I have three times as many associates in the building, 
uh, during, you know, Black Friday week, Cyber Monday, you know, I have a vision for how that process is going to actually work. How am I going to lay out the, the, the work and effort uh, that those individuals are going to perform as for the business um, in the space that you have? And, and so, you know, increasing thinking about flexibility is always good in that regard um, so that, you know, you have some adaptability to deal with different situations, whether that's a peak in volume activity like we talked about, or, you know, maybe you're a business that builds up uh, storage throughout the year uh, as well. Uh, at certain times of the year, you know, you need to think of, think about what that's going to um, also look like. I think, you know, a common, a real common story, you know, or thread we see with customers is that outbound packing side is that um, as the volumes increase, it's it, it looks, uh, it's one thing to bring more pickers into an area, um, but to be able to pack and ship at volumes that are much different than your everyday volumes really is a space consuming thing. And so, um, you know, that might mean you need to set up packing more packing stations temporarily, maybe even want to split the packing process a little bit differently where certain parts of the process aren't uh, done by the single individual that would normally do everything with from sealing and shipping. Maybe your temporary your temporary seasonal associates might take some of that process out. So thinking about what that's really going to look like in the space at those peak volumes is certainly um, certainly an important thing if you're a business that has those sort of uh, swings and volumes. Um, I think an, an, another thing you know that we kind of touched upon there is just making sure we're aware of uh, not just the obvious things with regards to things like where am I going to set up storage, which, which of course is really important, where am I going to lay out racking or, or, or shelving, um, but planning appropriately for those um, non-storage areas, for areas that are intended for queuing and staging and things like that that are uh, important. Um, so those are other activities that need uh, consideration. So Robert, we've talked about some of the conceptual planning that you would need to do, but of course, there's also physical things that you might need to plan for. So what are some of those physical things like racking, labeling, things of that nature that you might need to plan for when setting up your warehouse? Yeah, um, I think some of that, uh, as you mentioned, of course, you know, racking and fixtures are, are a part of it, but um, conceptually at the beginning, if you are, you know, in a position where you're really looking at a new facility, taking first to taking a look at what the facility flow and shape is going to look like. Every building isn't this perfect, you know, rectangle or square warehouse that we would all like to envision, you know, buildings that you might build or lease might look different. Um, they may be have different shapes. They may have obstructions inside the building. The door positions are really usually quite key in thinking about the flow. So I think starting first with trying to come up with a high level plan for flow, where is inbound going to occur? How is that going to move into storage? Um, anything that's involved in outbound, of course, picking and packing, but other outbound activities, maybe you have value add things with regards to assembly or packing that have to occur. Really first conceptualizing that overall facility flow is, is, a, is a good first step. Um, thinking about in, in that regards, how do I reduce the overall travel of goods as they go from an inbound process to an outbound process is sort of a key way to uh, think about that. Um, Within that thinking about facility flow, you know, you should start thinking about traffic patterns uh, so that we don't, you know, create problems with congestion. Um, if you've got a lot of foot traffic for various reasons inside the facility, thinking about where that foot traffic or pedestrian traffic is going to be for the purposes of safety, keeping things, you know, people that are on foot, you know, segregated from, you know, heavy equipment operation, you know, or industrial trucks, you know, that's something to think about early and, and sort of establishing an initial concept around the layout. Um, as you move towards fixtures and thinking about things like racking and storage, um, then you can start, you know, laying that in with your desired flow of the building. Um, you know, if you're buying new fixtures or whether you're bringing over existing fixtures, you're going to want to start looking quickly, you know, how, how am I going to position that racking with the flow of the building? Um, what's the accessibility going to be of that? Uh, so where are my aisles going to be? Things like, do I need a cross aisle to make sure I don't have really long runs that require a user to go all the way around an aisle to get from one place to another is something to think about. Um, and real early, obviously, with racking layout, you're going to start thinking about things like column spacing and those other things that are obstructions where you don't get always this perfect white clean sheet to put anything anywhere you want. You've got to deal with the realities of where column positions are and making selections there. Um, 
you know, your, your mobile trucks or your industrial trucks and forklifts that you're using, it's also a good time to consider that because as you're trying to make decisions around things like racking, you know, maybe you're used to using a particular piece of equipment that has a certain turning radius, but as you're figuring out how, where you can position your aisles for storage, it might be a good time to consider, you know, is this, is the forklift or industrial truck that I'm using now, or maybe the picking cart that I'm using now really the optimal thing. Um, you know, you only get a certain amount of square footage or square meters that you're going to be leasing or building. And so maximizing that, that use of your storage is really important. And um, that equipment selection itself can actually help uh, find ways for you to increase your storage as well. Um, and I think, you know, moving beyond, uh, you know, fixtures that you've got to put in place to support the warehouse. Uh, you know, the other thing you've got to think about a little bit um, are the processes and system implications of the locations themselves. So um, you'll start to thinking about what are my naming conventions, you know, for the storage area itself. Uh, of course, you want to try to make things like that easy to understand for the user so that as they travel across the warehouse, they can sort of learn to know what to expect going down any sort of aisle or approaching any sort of storage area. The, the naming convention should be consistent and intuitive so that um, if they're in the same position on one aisle over from another aisle, they would expect to see a similar sort of bin naming with just maybe the aisle uh, letter being different. Um, also, um, the, kind of, those are kind of the obvious system locations or bins that you might be setting up from a system standpoint. You also need to think about the other systemic logical locations for things like staging, outbound, maybe QA hold, returns processing, starting to think around uh, what that's going to look like as it relates to the systems process that, that maybe our smarts helping you with um, for moving and controlling inventory in the system. Um, you want to obviously have strong inventory accuracy and control. And so thinking about what those logical, let's say non-racked or non-shelving locations are going to be and how that works with the process is also uh, an important consideration. So based off of everything we've discussed today, if someone is moving into a new facility, what would be your biggest piece of advice to them? Oh, okay. I, that might be hard to answer with one thing, but I'll try to not be too long-winded. Um, I think, um, um, you know, if you've got visibility to an event like this happening in your business, um, I would first just encourage you to start early on the planning process. Um, it's definitely something that if you can give yourself more time, um, you will end up with a better result. Um, often, you know, if you've got end up in a deadline of a move date or a move out date or, you know, a facility move in date, you know, you're going to end up in a position of urgency. And what you don't want to happen is be making decisions uh, at the last minute because of that urgency that aren't well thought. So to the degree you have time for planning, I would really encourage um, to spend some time planning and thinking about these things, organizing your thoughts around what are the most important things you want to solve? Almost like if you're going to go buy a car or a house, create your list, like what's most important that you want to check your boxes on? Because some of these things are competing, you know, compete against each other, things like flexibility versus storage space. Like, so you really want to have your thoughts well organized around what you're trying to solve and what's the most important. Um, the other thing I would encourage are use your partners and use and use the things that you have access to. So if, if, if you've got skills within your organization to help do this, then leverage those individuals. If you don't, you can look for, you know, consultants um, to help you through this process. Certainly leverage people like R of Smart, who are your partners with uh, that have experience in this area. We can help you figure out how all that pieces together with your process and systems. Um, you also have things like finding things, you know, in local businesses, people that are trying to solve similar challenges, a lot of times people that are in the same business, you know, they want to share ideas. So you can go talk to other businesses that have tried to solve similar challenges, see how, what their thought process was and see how it sort of worked out and then replay that against your business to help you make maybe those decisions that you're really struggling with in the process. Robert, thank you so much for being here today. Of course, for those of you who are watching, if you've got questions for Robert or you'd like to get in touch with RF Smart, you can email us at info at rfsmart.com. I'm going to leave a useful resource linked down below for you. So you can also check that out as you begin investigating your journey to your new warehouse. Uh, Robert, thank you again. And to those of you watching, thanks. We'll see you again soon.